Hey all my dogs. Hello everyone. How's it going? My name is Gavin Strange. Welcome to the stream. It is Thursday afternoon. I hope you're having a cracking day. It is considerably cooler than it was last night, which was unbearable. <laughs> Anyone in the UK, I'm sure, was going through the same thing of just a big, hot, sweltering mess. And today's a lot cooler, thankfully. Thankfully. How is everyone? How's everyone in the chat? Thank you so much for stopping by. I hope you've got your sarnies. Hope you've got a cup of tea or a cold drink, a nice bit of water if you're a little bit hot. Thank you for joining. So today I want to dig into photography stuff. Photography stuff is something that I have loved for forever and ever really. It's a big part of, of you know visual image, it's a big part of design for me and it's just always been a process and a discipline that I've been fascinated in and I just wanted to share a passion of mine really. I wanted to share a passion for the kit that I use. Um, I want to share some of my favorite photos that I've taken for, for many different reasons. A lot of them are very personal to me because they're the people in them, but also, you know, I, I, I just love the, the technology behind it and I'll, I'll be sharing film um, photos, digital photos, everything and anything. I'm not, I'm, I'm not a purist by any stretch. I like all sorts of things as should be the way you know there is no right there's no wrong um so i kind of want to share the stuff that makes me excited hello everyone in the chat tour de france golden fortress vonnie it's lovely to have you all here how are you lovely lot what's been going on um a big exciting thing for me is there it is i got an ipad pro today and i am very very excited to get stuck into that um i've only sort of turned it on and set it up uh, but straight away it's got i've got the magic keyboard as well and it feels like a it feels like a macbook it's amazing got a little mouse cursor and everything so i'm really really excited to get stuck into that it's actually inspired by golden fortress simon in the chat here who's doing a lot of his beautiful uh, character artist illustration stuff on his pro and it just made me think ah i should I should, I should get into this more because I've sort of fallen out of the habit of drawing and digital drawing and, and I'm kind of relying on the same tools and I kind of want to uh, freshen it up a bit, I guess, and kind of see, see can I do anything new or different or try and evolve a style. So if anyone has any recommendations for iPad Pro stuff, whether that's apps, I've got Procreate already, haven't opened it yet, but definitely got Procreate. I'm going to get Loom, the uh, sort of looping, beautiful, organic animation app, um, and that's all I've planned to get at the minute. I think I'm gonna get some of those True Grit texture packs. So if anyone else has any recommendations of where to get good brushes and texture packs, then I wanna get on that. Kinda of just wanna experiment and play and see what I can see what I can do and create really. There is no plan. And then that feels a little bit overwhelming or as well, like ah oh, oh, I don't know where I don't know where to start. Uh, so I guess just start somewhere. That's always the thing, right? You just, you know, the hardest part is, is putting one foot in front of the other. So I'm going to just do that, have a little play and see, see where we go. Shabello is here in the chat. Hello, Sarah. I was looking at your beautiful um, uh, sting reel, sting reel, sizzle reel on your Vimeo. You should share it in the chat because it's awesome. You're a fantastic animator and designer. Very inspirational. Thank you very much for sharing that on the Discord. Shout out to our Discord as well. We've got a Discord called um, The Happy Place and it's intentionally a happy place on the internet where all types of people, um, we all just gather and uh, pr pretty much as we're all working, we just sort of chat away in text chat on there. It's meant to be a bit of, a little bit of respite from the awfulness that is the internet. So um, do come and join us on The Happy Place Discord. There's a link here in the chat with the little night bot is, is um, sharing the link with you. If you do exclamation mark command, it will tell you the commands that you can trigger but also there's a link to it in the twitch feed as well so let's get started i guess we're on a lunch time i don't want to keep too much of people's time let's jump over to the webcam view so i want to yeah just sort of share a few a few of my different different cameras really and i guess i guess i want to start with something that has been so trusty to me and it is a camera that is was was all I could afford at the at the time. This is probably 10, 12 years old now. The Canon EOS 550D, and the the 550D with the 50 mil, the Nifty 50. Um, where's the thing gone? Nifty 50, 50 mil, which is 
what are they under 100 quid maybe so this was sort of a, a real budget budget camera for me but it was my first foray into a digital slr because previous to this i'd used film slrs which i'll talk about in a bit but um the the big thing here was that this shot hd video it shot to mp4 and it was affordable this was the thing it shot hd video and it was affordable and this tool kind of changed my life actually because it was using this that um myself and a good portion of friends made a, a film called bites mind a film that i keep talking about a lot and it's a running joke with all my mates it's all i ever talk about even though it's 10 years ago um but but we all had a bunch of these and because they were affordable you could get a cinematic looking image um because you know this thing could make things look cinematic you wanted to make something cinematic you know the technology inspired the the ambition really so this was this was a big a big sort of push in my um in my filmmaking as well as photography and it's just bomb proof i i, I don't really use it anymore but i kind of I still fall back to it if I want to just shoot something quickly because it still gives a great image and obviously the downside, you know, a 10 year old digital camera, it, it's dynamic range um, isn't as great, um, it's compression won't be as great, obviously the, the megapixels won't be as great but that doesn't really matter, you know, you can still get a 5k image out of this thing but you know, I've got a, I've got a cheaper battery grip from, from eBay so it looks the part, it looks, you know, it looks like a bit of a bit of a beast but really it's a really really simple camera and the 50 mil is just so good this was the the, the ultrasonic um 50 mil so it means that you uh i think what what does that mean does it mean it's no it's not stabilized is it what does ultrasonic mean don't know but i got it because it was under 100 quid you know so with this this body i think the body was 400 quid maybe in this this 50 mil it was um yeah it really sort of opened my eyes and because it was my first digital slr i finally feel like i got to be a better photographer because when i first got into photography i found it so overwhelming because i'm really not very good at maths and i am terrified of numbers and so all of a sudden you're looking at, at shutter speed and iso and apertures and all of this stuff and it was like ah, numbers numbers ah. but what this did is obviously because it's digital you know you could shoot a photo and then in obviously real instant instantaneous feedback you'd see the image that was bad and you'd look at the numbers and and, and it just forces you to play so you maybe move through move a few dials and go oh what if i you know you know have a higher stop or a lower stop if i change the iso and i think as soon as i click that if you try and focus on just one of those numbers let the other two work for you so maybe you know i often like shooting at a you know an f-stop of probably 2.8 or three and a half something like that like I like shallow depth of field often you know and so then I try and go well that's that's the that's the 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 parameter that I know I want so let's use you know um shutter speed and ISO to make that work for me to get the image that I want to do so you know I'm not a technical photographer at all I, I'm not I'm not that I'm, and I'm not even a good photographer but I just really enjoy it I love being behind the camera I find it really special to sort of to just float into the background and just capture stuff especially around friends or family or, or, or anything really and I often found it was a real tool because I don't drink and so if pre-family you were out out um or it was an event or something like that i don't know i just felt comfortable thinking well i'll just capture the night i'll just sort of go and shoot stuff and i really enjoy that because i kind of don't i don't know i'm not sort of forced to take part in the revelry where maybe i've had my third lemonade and it's sort of like it's only so many fizzy pop you can drink you know this was like a t this was just a, a, a almost a bit of escapism i could still be there with everyone but in a way that was more comfortable for me you know and that i think that's why photography um uh, i just i just love it and then just you know all your focus is on one image one still this just capturing that perfect frame there's something very very special about photography i think just sort of um you know freezing this tiny slice of time that might not mean anything to anyone else but it really means something to you and then you know when you look at other people's photography it's just great to to sort of you don't know the context behind it so you invent your own you know you invent your own way of looking at things and the interpretation of their work which is really really special so in the chat we've got oswald 808 my good friend curtis who is a 
also a camera camera fiend says oh quieter and faster mo focus mode i think that's what ultrasonic means thank you mate you're a star and katie's here katie thank you so much for your kind comments on youtube it's lovely to see you here on the stream you say i'm in i'm the same if i went to a gig alone my camera was my friend yeah absolutely and, and you know things like gigs are are amazing uh you know because obviously there's often great lighting and if you're sort of shooting you, you know you don't really know what you're going to get and it's you know the best feeling is when you you know if you shoot digital is you know then you, you come home after the night and then you just sort of you know you press play on the back and then you're just scrolling through and it's like oh there's that there's that there's that you know just i find it a real thrill a real thrill just to see the stills and you know when um you get it and you're like oh that's the shot that's the shot oh i love it it's it's so it's so 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 exciting you know so i'm a big big fan of that golden fortress simon in the chat says your brother oh my brother yes my brother is crazy good photographer must be in the blood yeah my brother daniel is a fantastic photographer um i've actually got one of these cameras here i i I got from him many moons ago. Yeah, my brother Daniel Strange is a brilliant photographer. Um, and Gritty Knock, welcome to the chat, Gritty Knock. Best ways to not be in any photos, be behind the camera. Yes, absolutely. Yeah, just always lurking, lurking in the background. So that's that's my my camera choice number one, the trusty 550D. And I don't have a more modern camera than this, really, than a 10-year-old camera because I work at Ardman Animations. As you might imagine, that place is full of awesome cameras. So I kind of just got to a point, apart from a few bespoke cameras that I'll talk about that I want to get, you know, in terms of a good DSLR, there's no point me spending money, you know, the money that I can afford for DSLR is going to be an okay one, but I can just go and borrow the awesome kit at Ardman. You know, they've got awesome, awesome Canon cameras and awesome Nikon cameras and the lens collections. Obviously, any camera is only really as good as a glass. It's only as good as the lens. Um, so I just just have the privilege of being able to um, go and borrow the awesome stuff. So if I'm sort of no, I'm trying to shoot something intentionally high resolution, I'll go and bor borrow something from the production technology department. But a lot of these these pieces of kit is not about i'm not obviously i'm not a professional photographer they are more to capture moments and and so i i you know i enjoy them as pieces of technology and pieces of machinery and so that's why i want to share so that's number one the canon eos 550d let's put that down there what else we got next let's go to another digital camera actually and this is another really quite old one this is a fuji x100s and it's a digital rangefinder and what i love about this is the sort of simplicity of it i mean it looks it's a really nice design for digital a digital camera and it i would love if i could have any cat well I'd have lots of different cameras. Basically, if I was won the lottery or was rich, all I would spend my money on is cameras. That was pretty much it. Hasselblad's Leicas, I'd go the full tilt. Um, but this has kind of got that rangefinder like a look, which I love, I adore. And what I love about this is it's it's portable. It's really it's really easy to ca to capture great images. Um, Fuji, because obviously they've got such a legacy in film, their color treatment, um, their sort of different looks that you can apply, or the different uh, you know visual styles you can apply to a digital photo right out of the out of the box is lovely they've got real nice film emulation and not that it's about trying to exactly replicate film because they've both got their own special things but this um yeah it just gives it a really really lovely look and it's it's a real joy to use you know it's it's really it's really you know nice it's got a digital viewfinder it's got an optical viewfinder um and this is old the x100s is really old and i keep thinking oh, i'd like to upgrade but it's one of those ones right that okay, well, if I want the top one, I'm going to go and spend a thousand pounds and being a family man and, you know, having a normal life, I don't just have a grand I can drop. So, you know, this this still works good and I, 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 I love using it. The autofocus in, at night is a bit is a bit rubbish, but that's kind of what you get, right, for cameras that are, you know, a little bit a little bit older. They just don't have the, the pixel count or they don't have the fast autofocus, which this is kind of lacking. Um, but it's, it's lovely. I really recommend any of the Fuji X ranges. I think there's also an X, XA range or X2 range, something like that, or the Pro range. But the, basically the X100s, the S, the F, are all really, really good. So if you're looking for a, a compact, beautiful digital rangefinder style camera, um, talking a rangefinder, it's, well, 
I don't know if this is rangefinder. I don't know if I've got rangefinders. I don't know if I fully understand them. I know that it's um, it's not DSLR. It's mirrorless. So when you take a picture, there's no dunk, dunk, you know, there's no mirror that opens up to to let in the sensor, which is what the the Canon DSLR is. You know, this is mirrorless, which means it's lighter, um, which means it's also quieter. You know, kind of for that proper street photography thing. And again, there's people who are real in real strong camps about rangefinders and mirrorless versus DSLR, but. I don't really care. I like what I like, and you know, they're, they're, they're different types of things. I can't exactly describe it. I'm sure people in the chat, you know, Curtis especially, you you will know more about um, the actual mechanics than I do. But I know, I know what I like, you know. So between this and the Canon, that I love, um, I love both of them. I love both of them. Let's move on to some film, shall we? And I'm gonna go with this crazy contraption. Oh, shout out to Tristan Nush for, for, for the follow. Thank you so much. Welcome, welcome, welcome. Fuji follow, yes. Big up, Fuji fans. Nice to have you here. Thanks for stopping by. So this crazy thing is a 3D stereoscopic camera. And literally what it is, is two Olympus XA2 cameras mounted together on a bar. And the only thing inside this bar is a tiny bit of wire that connects the master camera to the other one. So if I fire that trigger, it makes that camera fire as well. And um, it's the, the, the distance between the two lenses is um, pretty much enough to replicate what a 3D feel is. And what you do is you shoot on slide film and then what you get back is, is a slide. But because you've got two cameras, you, you basically have a right slide and a left slide and then what you do when you get all your all your all your 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 films all your films back ooh, see if i can get that close to the camera um you basically have to go through every single one and organize and work out which one's left eye which one's right eye because there's not really an easy way to do it so then you've got two versions of the same picture but hopefully if you've shot it and you've kept your arm still and your subject has kept still nothing give or take should move so then you put it in something like this which is just a plastic viewfinder with the right view apart. And then when you put it up to your eyes, you've got a stereoscopic 3D picture. Whoa. Is this going to work? Oh, yeah, there you go. This is something I shot on set of the Greenpeace film. And this is Inez uh, attending to her shot which was um, some some of the Turtle Journey characters in their clamshell car. So then when you look at it through this, and obviously you can't see it on the internet, you can only see it for real, you've got an actual 3D stereoscopic image with depth. It is super, super, super fun. Super fun because, you know, there's not many things that... Everything gets replicated digitally, right? Everything, you, you know, you can share and show photos dead easy. But this actual 3D photography, it's a bit of an art and it's a bit of a trick. But, um, you know, when you get it back, I've got a bunch of these. And I, I love taking my little, I have my little slideshow viewer and I have my little box of slides and I go and take them around to people and just shove it in their faces and go, look, 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 look. You know, 3D photography is, is really special. It feels really, really magic. So Tristan in the chat says, did you build it on your own? Oh, no, no, no. This is a rig that I borrowed from my good friend Merlin Crossingham, who's a, a director, animator at Ardman. And um, he bought this on eBay um, because he's he captured a bunch of 3D images with his own rig on Curse of the Were Rabbit, where um, uh, he was capturing all of the behind the scenes of the Wallace and Gromit Curse of the Were Rabbit on 3D photos. And they are stunning. They're absolutely stunning. Just a beautiful sort of glimpse into the world of stop frame animation. They're stunning. And then because he got really into it from that, he then bought his own um, version on, on eBay. It's brilliant. It's so brilliant. Um, I normally shoot with sort of, I can't remember what slide film I use now. Um, maybe Pruvia? Can't really remember. But. They're awesome, they're awesome. Tristan in the chat says, send in the left eye film first. Oh, of course. Send in the left eye film first, and then when it comes back developed, send in the right. That should be helpful. Oh, my days. Why did I not think of that? That's so simple and so brilliant. Well done, mate. <laughs> Smashed it. So, yeah, this thing is is amazing. So, if you can sort of get into, into 3D photography, then, you know, just Google things like this. I don't even know what they're, what they're called. Just sort of 3D jerry-rigged things. Very, very, very cool. Very, very cool. 
So that's the next one. This one is another bit of a bonkers camera and it is cheap as chips. And you can find these on eBay. They're not even really branded. Um, they are, my friend Dan on Instagram told me about these. Basically they shoot ultra, ultra wide uh, pictures. They load on normal 35 mil film, but they ba basically, all it has is a black sort of bar in front of the center top and bottom to make it look super 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 um super 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 widescreen and so when you get it developed you, you say don't crop anything it just is what it is and i'll show you some pictures soon but it's cheap you can pick these up for 10 quid and they're really grainy and they're really lo-fi and i think they're set to iso 200 so you all you do is load your film in and they're basically just toy cameras they are they're honestly cheap as chips there's really nothing to them they are so simple but as you'll see soon that you can get some really great results and because they're so cheap they let in light leaks they're a bit wonky it's got a really lovely analog charm so if you're looking for if you're looking for that kind of just cheap you know make something quite interesting then this is the this is the camera for you and there like i say there isn't any um it's not really a brand name. I think these were called Reader's Digest Panorama cameras, if you can find them on eBay. Cheap as chips. And they're all, they all might look a bit different, but they all do the same thing. Right, I'm just going to catch up with the chat. Tristan says, wait, hold on. Do I see a Leica over there? Hells yes, I'm saving that bad boy till last because that is my pride and joy. <laughs> we're getting there, we're getting there. So yeah, Panorama Reader's Digest camera. Cheap and fun and silly. Really, really cool. Moving on to a bit of medium format now. This is a camera that I bought from my brother, Dan, the Yashica Mat 124G. And, you know, medium format is just, it's so beautiful. The, the, that extra bit of resolution on the film, just, again, it's hard not to try and sound like a purist. It's, it, it's just film, film just gives you something. It's different, you know, there's no right and there's no wrong. You know, they're different, different like anything, it's a different type of pencil, it's a different tool, it's a different type of paper. You know, whatever it is, it just gives you a different something. And, and what I love is having to wait with film. I love the feeling of shooting stuff and then waiting to send something off, you know, and the, and the, the, um, you know, the excitement of, am I going to get an image out of this? Am I going to get something? And also, if you leave it long enough, you can't remember what you shot. That's really, really exciting. I really like the um, the thrill of that and the waiting of that. And the Yashica is, is, is lovely. And it's got, you know, everyone loves doing, is this what you mean, Fraser? Sort of shooting, shooting top down through the, uh, top down through the top. Really, really nice. And it's hard though, because it's, it's reversed, so it's mirrored. So down is up, down is up, and right is left, and it's really hard to get it to get it balanced. It, I find it really, really difficult, but it's beautiful. It's really, you know, it's it's such a lovely t kit. Ooh, there you go. It's got like this inbuilt magnifier as well, and it's it's a bit wonky, and um, none of the light meters work. So I just use an app actually. My phone's connected to the camera, but I just use. I think it's just called Light Meter. You know, it works does just a you know just as good a job. I would love a proper light meter, but actually, there's a great iPhone app. It's about twenty quid that does it. So I kind of you know obviously always have your phone with you. So I kind of use that, and it's always a little bit of a a little bit of a a, a wonky thing to 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 get used to. But that's the charm of film. Welcome, Nifty Digits. Thank you so much for the follow. Thank you for stopping by. Yeah, so this is lovely. I would like more medium format cameras because I absolutely adore the images that you get back. It's really special. So actually, if anyone's got any recommendations for good medium format cameras, I'd love to hear them. But they're expensive as well, kind of, you know, I don't want to spend loads, but I mean, I'd love a Hasselblad. I think everyone would love a Hasselblad. But, you know, I just really, it's quite complicated to use as well. And I forget how to use it all the time. I forget how to load it all the time. I'm always having to Google the manual to remember how this stuff, um, how this stuff works. But uh, yeah, it's really, really lovely. It's a really beautiful thing to, to learn. Ah, catching up on the chat. Tristan says, a friend of mine got the Hasselblad 500C. I don't know what that one is, but that just sounds like money. They're all beautiful, all Hasselblads. And Tristan also says, I'd love to get a Yashica. How's this what's this type of camera called in English? 
Uh, medium format, I guess. Yeah, just medium format. Unless it was something else. I don't really know, actually. Oh, Tristan, so you... Oh, you live near the Leica factory in Germany. Oh, and you've got a Leica SL. Oh, beautiful. I would love to go to the Leica factory. Like many photographers would, I'm sure it's a holy grail. So yeah, so that's a Yashica Mat 124G. And I think these are quite affordable now as well. Um, but yeah, I would love to get more. If I could spend all money in the world, that's what I do, I buy cameras. So this, this is my pride and joy. This is the Leica M6, um, 35 mil film camera. And this is my heirloom. So when I'm dead and buried, Sully, my son, will have this. And the reason it's so special is, I mean, I've always coveted Leica. I'm just a big fan of the brand. I'm a fan of their, their sort of work ethic and just the amount of attention to detail they've put into every camera. You know, they're, they're, they are built like bricks. They are absolutely um, just sort of impervious to bullets. They are, they are, you know, and they also are photographers camera of choice you know there, there's a reason the legacy is as powerful as it is um and so the reason i got this is my grand passed away quite a few years ago and when we were at her funeral um we, there was a lovely little pin board on the side that had lots and lots of um film photos of her her in her life um, uh, for her family, her connections, and it was so lovely looking at her life in, in film, in, in pictures. And I thought to myself, you know, when I'm dead and snuff it, my kids aren't going to go, oh, I think dad had an iPhone 11. Shall we, shall we try and dig out this old cable and see if we've got any pictures? No one will. They won't care about digital devices. And I'd shot film previously when I was at college, but I basically just moved over to digital. And I just thought, no, I, I, I want to get back into film photography. And my nan left me a little bit of money, a little bit of money when she passed. And I thought, do you know what? I'm going to do it. I'm going to buy the camera I want. I'm going to buy the camera I, I really want to own. And I want to make memories with it. I want it to be something that I keep and love as a device, but also it's going to create things that I, you know, treasure. And so I did tons and tons and tons and tons of research until I settled on the this the Leica M6. And even though it was very, very, very expensive, even for a second-hand camera, I do not regret it for a second. Um, it is the so it's the M6, the non-TTL version, so it's pre-TTL, um, and it's got the 50 mm Summicron lens on it, but. What is really special about this, so when I found this camera um, available to buy on a sort of a camera um, second-hand forum, this was called, is it DR? Dual, dual range? It was something like the 50mm Summicron DR version. And you know sometimes when you've got your heart set on finding something that you really want, and then you all you can find is like an alternate version, and you think, oh man, it's going to be... Oh it's, oh, it's going to be rubbish. It's not the one I want. It's like a cheap cop out. So I started doing some reading, but then I found that um, Ken Rockwell, if you're into photography, do use the Ken Rockwell website who reviews and, and explains every camera. He said, if you can find the 50 mil Summicron DR, absolutely buy it because it is the best 50 mil lens that they ever made. And it is so, so rare. And what the DR means is basically, I don't know if you can see it here, you, you've got a certain amount of range here um, for, for the distance that you, that, you, that you get. And then you see this thing here, it basically hits a point. You can't get any wider or closer unless, until you use this thing, which comes with it, right? And then it's this beautiful custom made little extra thing that you put on the front. Oh, hang on. You, you basically pull, pull the lens forward and out. So it jumps across the notch onto the next bit. And you put this extra little viewfinder on and then it lets you go beyond. So it can basically do wide and close up in the same thing. It's absolutely stunning because it basically engages a second set of glass inside it. So it's got these two beautiful, um, beautiful pieces of glass inside it. And it is just stunning. And the fact that it just comes, I mean, it just, I mean, look at it when it's got it on. It's a beautiful, beautiful thing. 
we go, you take it off, and then you put it back in its little tiny pouch. It's it's gorgeous. And so you know when you spend a lot of money on something and you you before it arrives you have that guilt and you think, oh god, what have I done? What have I done? The second I got this didn't feel guilty and the second I got some images back from it were absolutely stunning um, and you know 50 mil lens is perfect I think I you know I always use a 50 I, I do love wine angle stuff but if I was going to get another Summicron or some like a lens you know I'd have to spend another two three grand to get a 25 and so I just figure stick with a 50 and just move further back you know I love I love the distortion of wine angle lenses but you know, a 50 absolutely does um, does everything that I, I need it to. So it's, it's yeah, it is my pride and joy. It still works perfectly. It's actually, well, it sh it's um, shutter counter is broken. I need to get it fixed. But, you know, it still shoots because it's not got um, uh, any other sort of technology in it. It runs without battery. You, j you don't get a light meter, but it, it doesn't really matter. So catching up with a few questions in the chat. Do you have problems with the shutter? I read that the M6 has some problems with it. I think that's the M6 TTL because that was electronic, right? But this M6 never, never had a problem. So it's been great apart from the shutter counter. But, you know, it's a hang on. The body is from 95. The lens is from 1955. It's old. It's really old. And this is the other thing. So people, people, um, people lenses any m series lens ever made with leica in the last hundred years will work with any leica m camera so if you went to a leica shop right now bought a digital i don't know 15 grand digital m10 you could take this lens because it's an m lens that's 50 60 years old and it would work perfectly amazing amazing uh what else is happening in the chat Katie says, I know nothing about film photography, but would love to know more. I wouldn't even know which film camera I want to own. Ah, oh, the Olympus do great film cameras, great start of film cameras. Um, Fuji, to be honest, any 35mm camera really, uh, I think you don't, like, don't, you don't have to get stuck into um, any sort of camera snobbery, you know, uh, just something that's affordable to get started with. I just think it's a joy, you know, the, the waiting to get the images back. So do, you know, just do a bit of bit of eBay research, really. Um, but, you know, yeah, don't get worried about any snobbery. They're all they're all great. They're all great. Tour de France says, I believe this is what Jason Lee uses also. Yes, yes, I think he does. Yeah. Um, known Origin in the chat. Welcome in the chat. Says second hand Pentax are always a fun start. Oh, yes, Pentax is great shout. Yeah, Katie, you, you'll, um, you'll get a great Pentax camera. What else is going on? No, no one says, wow, like a gold. Not cheap though, 2K. Yeah, I think the body was two grand and the lens was a grand, I think. I think. I can't remember. So this is the thing, pride and, you know, pride and joy. And this this will be, I will, my, my children will, will have this. This is, I, I don't want them to go, oh, here's dad's old iPhone. I want them to go, right, look at the images that he captured. And yeah, as you say, known origin in the chat, investment. Absolutely, this is an investment. Like this is something I absolutely believe in and adore. And even though the 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 counter's broken, you know, I know a place to go and get that fixed. So all this needs is a little bit of a little bit of love and care and, and attention to um, to look after it. Basically, that's kind of what I want to do. So yeah, like M6, my pride and joy, my pride and joy. But just before we move on and actually show you some of my favorite photos, I just want to talk a little bit about film. So Provia, yeah, Provia 400. No, Provia, no, not Provia. Oh God, what's it called? What's it called? Not Provia. Provia is a slide film, Provia 50, I love. So if you're shooting slide film, it gives you really nice sort of saturated colors, Provia. What's it, oh my God. I always forget the names of films and I don't have them here because I ran out. What are they called? Oh, I can't really remember. But Cine Steel, if you're shooting, if you're shooting, um, want like a real nice tungsten look. Oops. This Cine Steel film is really nice. It's 800 ISO, and it basically anything you know, if you're shooting it at night, anything that's got tungsten lights, it gives it that beautiful cinematic bluey green glow. Portra Oswald, yes, of course, Curtis and Jack, yes. Portra, Portra 400, I absolutely love. It's really warm, it's really smooth. It's got a lovely bit of um, uh, blah, 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 sort of warmth to it. 
um, yeah, I really, I really, I really like it. I mean, I'm also not really a film snob. You know, I'll try anything really. I quite like the the XP2 because it's black and white. Yet you can um, expose it. Um, you can get it developed as C41. Uh, what's this? 400 TX. Also another nice black and white. I just like. I'm not. Sometimes I like lots of grain. Sometimes I like not much grain. Again, I, the 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 film world, camera film world, can be quite a snobby thing. And. Pfft, it's just, you know, it's just, it is what it is. Just have fun. So I'll, I'll try anything really. Expired film, new film, all of that stuff. All of that stuff. But I think before we move on, we need a bit of an intermission, right? Let's do it. Silly, silly, silly boy. <laughs> Thanks for that. Thanks for the indulgence as always for my little silly little musical interlude. Right then, let's get on to some photos, shall we? They're my cameras. I kind of want to just share some of my favourite photos and I don't really have any defining thing that uh, I include photos for or not this is this is on my my website my um, personal website my photography section yeah I just like sharing anything so here here on the left um, we were in Cornwall and we had this amazing like set of god rays that was just illuminating the the, the ocean just out in the distance and again it's sort of you know it just I I just pick up and shoot with whatever I've got and I had I think I might have had that 400 TX film in it at the time and this was on the Leica this was on the M6 um, and again you know you get you get an image back and it's just like oh I remember that time I remember that you know I really like I really like those images that's what they do best and on the right that's my uncle Kev with our dog Peggy we um, they've got a little caravan down in um, down in uh, Somerset and we go and see them often and so I just like capturing the same reason you know the reason I bought the Leica was to to have these memories that in the future when I'm dead and gone that our kids will be able to sort of piece together kind of what life we lived and, and and our family and friends and you know I really want this to be sentimental so I try and capture when I see my family and friends you know as often as possible and, and it's just not it's, you know it's a nice reminder for us as well but then this is a digital shot this was a this is a photo so this is Finbar Hawkins my friend Finbar who's who's just about to release his debut novel called The Witch um, no I think it's called just called Witch it's got a beautiful cover um, and uh, he needed a portrait photo for his for the inside of the book and so I got to shoot that and I shot this on digital I shot this with 
um, I think it was a Canon 1DX from Ardman, so this is just um, on the grounds of Ardman, and we shot it on a lunchtime, and I graded it all in Lightroom, which I don't often do, actually. I often just sort of, if it's film, I pretty much leave them alone. Sometimes I tweak the crop, maybe, but generally, you, you know, it kind of, it is what it is. I like just the, well, how you shot it is how you shot it. Again, not that I'm a purist, but... It just is. It is what it is. And so, you know, I like to, I like taking portraits. I, I, I find that most interesting. So that's my buddy Finbar, who, as a fun fact, his sister is Sally, Sally Hawkins, um, the actress in Shape of Water and Submarine and countless, uh, Paddington, of course, of course. True, true fact, true fact. Oh, Tour de Fraz in the chat says, any experience with Capture One? What's Capture One? I've never even heard of it. I don't know what that is. Sounds good though. These, the one on the left here is medium format. So that was shot on the Yashka. You can just sort of tell it's got that lovely little bit of light leak in the top right hand corner. And this was a misty morning when we met up with friends um, at the start of the year. And that's my son on the left looking super grumpy. <laughs> and you know, just when you get a frame back and you're like, yes, that's how I remember this moment. And also I can't wait for him to see that when he's older. His little grumpy face, his little grumpy face. <laughs> <laughs> so nifty digits in the chat says what cameras are you using for your stream ah really rubbish ones <laughs> so the the what you're looking at here this that's the logitech c920 webcam and i'm hoping as, as this stream evolves i really want to get the sony alpha a5100 um it's small it's light and it's got great depth of field and that's that's what i want to get i want to get a dedicated stream camera um so thank you you know thanks to the kind people subscribing that's helped me uh, get on the way to sort of getting one of those so when when i can afford it i will because i would i would like this main camera to be a lot nicer it it, it does a good job you know and obviously a good camera is not going to make the stream better i need to be um uh, you know, I need I need to be good. I need to be a good streamer. A good camera's only going to make it look better. But if the content's pap, then. But I'll, you know, I want it to look nice, of course. So so yeah. So C Logitech C920, and then for the for the B camera. So when you were show, seeing me show the actual cameras, that's my iPhone using the OBS camera app um, installed on it, and actually it does a really good. It does a real good, good job of it. You know, again, I'd love a, a, a proper setup. Sort of Fraz says, I recommend Capture One for photography work. I use it more for studio photography, but it's great for adjusting photos. What better than Lightroom? Okay, Capture One. Okay, I'll check it out. Good shout. And then this image here on the right, the black and white one, that was a Leica, um, uh, the M6 with uh, probably 800TX. And I just love this because it makes me think um, of the Bigfoot photo. Of, you see this little beast running in the in the forest. This was a portrait photo of my good friend Josh, who's a musician and a composer and a drummer. Um, and he needed some promo photos for, I think, for his new album. So just classic, got the smoke grenades out, which, you know, I know a lot of people do, but it also just looks great. So we shot that. And I think I shot that on the 550D, actually. Yeah, I kind of wanted to, I wanted to use something that I knew that I knew how to use. Um, you know, sometimes with photography, especially if you're doing uh, photos for other people, you know, if you can just clamp down on the risk with um, things going wrong and you're using a piece of equipment that you know, then then do it. Because I've uh, quite a few times I've shot things for people and I've used a new camera and, you know, you're reacting to what's happening in the scene and you're trying to get great images. But if you're too busy faffing around with a camera that you don't know how to use, I, I've missed too many good shots for that. So I try and keep try and keep it simple, really couple more medium format photos here this is my my uh, parents live in the forest of dean and you often get really beautiful fog creeping up so this was using the yashka mat 124g the medium format camera and i used the the light meter on my phone again the the light meter app just to try and get a bit of a reading and they turned out all right i i don't color grade or color exposure tweak any film photos and so how they came out is how they came out and I once read that, you know, in a roll of film, if you can get one good image, you're golden. So I've always kind of stuck by that. If I get at least at least one good image from a whole roll of film, fantastic. I'm really happy. So any more than that is a bonus and it's nice treating it like that. So this is a bit of a weird abstract one, but this is a Taronga Zoo in Australia. Um, it was the seal pool, I think, this huge seal pool. And you've got these beautiful, gorgeous sort of rays of God rays just dappling through the water. And I think I, sh so this was on the Leica M6 again. And this was 
on Velvia 50 slide film. Um, slide, yeah, yeah, slide film, yeah. Just real punchy, you know, you get real um, blue grades to it. So again, I didn't color treat any of this. This came out that blue. Um, uh, yeah, and you know when you look at other people's photos and you they're blurring out of focus and you go, oh, I love it, so arty. But I don't know if you're like me, when you shoot a photo that's blurry and not pin sharp or, or a little bit wonky, you're like, oh, damn it, it's not perfect. But I think other people look into it in a different way that you do. So I try and um, I try and just, as much as I can, separate myself from it. And, and yeah, it's a little bit weird, but I, I kind of like it. And again, it means something to me, you know, it was a trip to Australia with my family. No origin in the chat says, I like that one, great atmosphere. Thanks, man. Very kind of you. Very kind of you. More family dog photos. I think this was the M6. Again, yeah, the M6 with um, Portra 400. My my doggy Peggy with um, my auntie and uncle. And it's just she looked at the camera at the exact right time. She's got both her eyes open and a big pink tongue. You know, again, just you never know until you've shot it and you get it get it developed. Golden Fortress in the chat says, you have such a vast library of stock for yourself too. This screams album cover to me. Oh, what, the blue one? Yeah, I should, I think I have, I have used it on my project toy, my SoundCloud. I have used that image, like bits of that image, I think, because it's, it's fun to do it. Another portrait from the shoot with Josh. Um, this was just by his, his house, some graffiti with a little bit of a, um, a little bit of a, uh, a classic, hey, stand by some graffiti to look edgy. But it, you know, the colours are nice. And, you know, big up Josh, he's wearing one of my Project Toy long sleeve t-shirts as well. Big, big, kind human man. So he's doing a bit of promo for me as well. Uh, this was shot digitally on, yeah, Canon 1DX with graded in Lightroom. And here we've got a mix of medium format and Leica stuff. So we've got medium format here. This is my wife, Jane, and son, Sully, uh, on Clevedon Pier Beach. Um, uh, with a, and it was on... Kodak Portra 160 medium format film and you can sort of see there's these weird numbers in the sky and that's because um, I think the the stock was out of date and the, the number information on the back sort of imprinted onto the back of the image um, so that's why it's got that sort of stuck on it and I quite I quite like it on the right is Sully and Jane having some fish and chips in Bristol Harbour and again you've got a lovely light leak here on the right just a little bit of oversaturation and I think that's Portra as well more medium format here, Cleveland Pier, and my friend Lucy um, animating, doing some uh, animation tests in a in a stu in a small test unit at Armon. And I like the light, the way the light hits her face. The light's hitting the side of her nose and the side of her face, and the contrast there really worked. And again, you know, it's a memory of a of a friend, you know, memory of a friend doing doing work. I just like these these captures. So here on the left is another medium format of Peggy, but here, do you remember me talking about that that crazy widescreen um, cheapo camera? These are what these super widescreen ones are. I crop the I crop the the black bit uh, top left and top right, but you get these really sort of bad light leaks. Things are out of focus front front and back. You know, it, nothing sharp. The colours are grainy. It's all a little bit, a bit blurry, but I love it. I, I really like it. It's really, it almost looks like 21 9 aspect ratio, like a cinema scope style thing. Just really grainy, lovely colours, and you don't know what you're going to get until you get it back. You know, low light sensitivity is not great, but you still get some really nice colours out of this stuff. Known origin in the chat says analog unique IDs coming through the images. Yeah, man, it's yeah, it's nice kind of seeing that. You know the imperfections, the imperfections are what make it nice. Tour de Fraz in the chat says, do you scan in developed photos or the negatives using a dual sided flat bit scanner? Aha! So I get all of my processing and scanning done at a place called photohippo.co.uk. I can't recommend it enough. I used a few different places around Bristol, but photohippo. .co.uk are awesome. They are really, really good value, um, and you can choose to basically get your, your films processed and then digitally scanned, and then you don't have to have prints. If you don't want prints, they'll give you a WeTransfer link of the high-res scans. Really, really good, really good value, very fast. Can't, can't recommend them enough. Photo Hippo, they're amazing. So I never scan or do any of myself. Just, I, I don't have a good scanner, and so I, I kind of, I've never got around to it. More um, 
more widescreen stuff. And then just, I love capturing my friends. So top left is my good friend Rich in his studio. Uh, they were shooting a promo video with these weird schools. And so I love that photo. It's one of my favorite photos of Rich. And that was all shot on the Yashkamat 124G medium format. And that was probably Portra as well. I think I pretty much shoot portrait on the on the medium format and then on the right even though it's really really contrasting you can barely see anything that's my son Sully um, playing with bubbles and that was all oh that was on the M6 like M6 with 400 TX as well I think really really contrasty but um, I really like how it came out more family photos that's my brother asleep on a train in Germany we were traveling together to Berlin and I love the light hitting his face. That was 400TX, I think, or something like that. And then more Australia stuff on the left. Sully playing on the beach in um, Manly, in Manly Bay. Beautiful hot day. On the right there, that's um, that's digital, actually, even though there's loads of grain. That was on the Fuji X100S, actually. On And I probably, in camera, used the black and white sort of uh, what would it have been? Maybe the 400TX. No, because that's Kodak. Anyway, a black and white emulation. Um, yeah, and just sort of naturally it came out like that. So sometimes I'll, I won't like shoot. I won't shoot raw. I, I don't really shoot raw unless I'm shooting for something. Like I'm shooting for um, a magazine or, or something that I know needs to be high res. I shoot um, kind of as I want it, as I want the image to be finished. So it's like, oh, let's shoot that black and white. And often, you know, if an image isn't very, if, if your landscape or your environment isn't very interesting, I always shoot black and white. Or if the colours aren't very great, or it's a grey overcast day and it's not very interesting, I'll just shoot, I'll just shoot black and white because it makes everything look good, really. So I try and I try and um, reduce the amount of work I have to do afterwards because I think I, you know, I'm not a professional photographer, so it's very much a hobby I kind of I don't want it to take over too much of my life you know I'll shoot it once I've shot it that's if I got it wrong I got it wrong and I have to live with it unless I really love an image and then I'll tweak it then on the left more I think that was mm, those colors look a bit crazy so maybe that was oh that was like that was slide film that probably was Velvia 50 um, on the left when we were on holiday on the left, that's more Velvia 50, and that's in Tintagel, this weird sort of crumbled hotel on the corner of, um, of a cliff. And then on the right, so that was a portrait photo of Ollie Munden, Mega Munden, who is an awesome illustrator and tattoo artist. And I went down to get a tattoo from him. I got this one. You can't see it because you can't see my arm. I can't show you. A beautiful, beautiful dog on my arm. Um, I went down to to um near brighton where he's based and shot a few portraits of him after he'd finished and yeah there was this awesome green tungsten light and i think i shot that on the fuji yeah fuji x100s on that actually um and just used one of the color profiles that made the tungsten green really pop so jm jms wly welcome to the chat thanks for stopping by fuji x100s my favorite camera i've owned they're good aren't they yeah i would love i would love the new the newer one, I really would, or a Leica Q2, I'd really like that, but they're like four and a half, five grand, and I just, I don't have four and a half, five grand, so I'll stick with the Fuji until I can afford otherwise. Oh, thank you, Katie, I'm glad you like the portrait, yeah, I really like that, I'm really happy with how that, how that turned out. Two of my favourite photos, that, the one on the left is Sully spraying him with a, with a, with a hose, and that was the M6, and again, that was shooting at quite a fast shutter speed because that I wanted to capture some of the water droplets. I um, mean, it was a really hot summer's day, hence why we're spraying him and just getting his little chuckle, his little smile. I I loved it. Um, Tour de Fraz. Oh, actually, that's a good question, Tour de Fraz. Any additional lighting on that portrait? No, I don't ever carry any additional lighting. Always natural light, and that is from just habit. I don't understand lighting, studio lighting well enough to take lights with me, so I just shoot with whatever I've got. Um, and I'm just inspired by people that shoot natural as well, so I kind of, you know, if there's not enough light, I ask if someone can move closer to a window or a light source and just, again, just try and think on the fly, really. Um, I would love to be good at studio photography and I would love to, to be better at syncing up, you know, have proper flashlights, but I'm not. 
I'm not. I'm learning and I'm doing all the CG work that I do. I feel like I'm learning an awful lot more about lighting because I have time to compose lights and to move things around. Uh, Fraser says, thought the reflection was a softbox. Uh, yeah, no, I just got lucky with just where the lights were in that in that scene. So yeah, on the left is Sully, and then on the right was a bunch of portraits. These were all done on the, the Fuji X100S, um, and these were the credits. I sh I've made the induction film for Ardman, so when you join the company, you get shown an induction film. And I, um, um, I shot everyone that was involved in the making of that film, I wanted to shoot portraits of to show in the end credits. So when those people who have joined Ardman watch that film, they then see the people in the credits that made the film, and hopefully they recognise them, and then it's a friendly face for them. So I basically just bought a ton of smoke grenades went out the front of Ardman with what I call the photo wall because it is this old knackered beautiful chipped paint wall that is just great for photos and then shot um I just shot burst mode on the um on the X100S and just let them take off a take off the cap of the smoke grenade and move it around their face and just got some Again, you don't know what you're going to get until you review the images. But we've got some really good ones like here with Obscure. This is Chris, who was a grader, obscuring it across his eyes. Black and white photo of my, my dad and Sully on a, on a hot summer's evening. You know, images like this just mean such a, such a lot to me. Again, I want to, you know, when Sully grows up, hopefully you'll, you know, have the physical print of this as well as seeing the images and, you know, documenting his life growing up, documenting my, my family. Again, that's, you know, my dad and Sully, but when he was really, really, really little and had the best hair in the world, which I'm massively jealous of, by the way, because I don't have any, and he had tons. He was born with that much hair. Um, he was a bit of a medical marvel. He was a talk of the um, talk of the midwives when he was born because he had loads of thick jet black hair. <laughs> and he just constantly needs haircuts. He's a hair growing machine. He definitely does not get that from me. This was shot on the X100S, this was the Fuji, so this was digital. Again, no post grading, just um, one of the colour profiles that was in the camera that was, I think kind of mimics portrait sort of thing. A couple of my favourite images. So this here is Ricky, Ricky Martin, not that Ricky Martin, the other Ricky Martin who who is the art ninja on CBBC, he's a really good friend of mine. He used to work at Ardman. He's a freelance animator, director, creator, designer, illustrator. He's great. And we were shooting we were shooting an episode of Art Ninja in a zoo and that zoo had a miniature model railway. And um but if you if you um do the uh get low enough to the ground it looks like a real train track. So we had him <laughs> had him lay down like he was stuck on a train track. And that was shot with the Yashkamat medium format as well and um, again, it's always a bit of a guess whether it's going to be in focus and the, the exposed right. But again, you know when you get an image back and you're like, yeah, yes, really stoked on that. And on the left is my friend Howie, where he looks really calm here, like he's just gently rubbing his ankle. But he just snapped his ankle about 10 minutes prior to that. But that's before the adrenaline wore off and he realised he'd snapped his ankle um, bombing a pump track in um in in bristol and this that was all shot on the fuji as well i think i just got the fuji and so i was really keen to just try and shoot everything um just to get used to the camera so you know these are all little glimpses into memories of just little little um you know little places little times at times in my life another medium format from the same day so this is sarah otherwise known as bernie a really good friend Ardman senior designer also part of Art Ninja. This was also the day that we were shooting in the zoo. And of course, because Art Ninja is just a silly program, uh, we were always dressing up like idiots and Sarah, Bernie had to wear a gorilla costume. And this was before we were rolling and I just thought it was great. She was just sitting on this bench drinking her, drinking her morning coffee with a monkey costume on. It was great. And again, you know, it's sort of, I'd love to know what, you know, when people first see that image, I know the story behind it, that it's like, oh, that's a normal, normal day at work. But hopefully, you know, it means something different to other people. More medium format on the right. That was on our honeymoon, actually. We stayed in this beautiful lodge. And that was a Yashkamat 24G on Portra, Portra 160 ISO film. Just this, all, all that was in the fields were just, she, it was great in the in the in the sort of um, the Black Mountains in Wales. It was really nice. 
I'll show a few more because we're past two o'clock now. I could keep showing forever. I'm not even halfway through. These are just the photos that I've got on my website. But maybe maybe we'll do another stream another time for more photos. If if everyone's interested in that, I know it's it's basically like let me show you the photos that I took on holiday. But all of these mean something different to me. They're all different experiences, different techniques. On the left here is Adam Cook, and um, this was when we were shooting a rap music video, and we basically just had to jerry rig. Um, the lighting store and basically take over this this lighting store room which was basically normally very boring and make it look interesting and we were putting a gel and a, and a blocker on a on a light in the ceiling and I just liked the light just illuminating his face so Adam's a great um, camera operator director of photography awesome photographer and it's I like capturing you know behind the scenes of when I'm working on stuff as well so if I'm working on film stuff I've always got a camera with me to try and capture it because I'm fascinated by the process and I want to remember it but also you often get some really cool images because you know especially putting up beautiful pieces of lighting you, you often get great shadows or reflections or pieces of contrast and that would have been shot on the Fuji X100S that was all digital on the right that's more medium format more honeymoon stuff on the left, that's another smoke portrait. And again, what I liked about there, because I was shooting auto focus, I think, actually, because I was I was doing burst mode on the Fuji X100S. Um, sometimes it would lose focus of the smoke and just stay on the back subject. But I quite like that Chris's head has totally disappeared and all you can see is this smoke head. I wish I would have shot a plate, because if Kai could have just had a plate of him and his um, check chair I could have placed that in front of him and it might just look like he's got a totally smoky head so sometimes you know you shoot an image and actually they're, they're good inspiration for a piece of graphic design work because you've got a great piece of imagery to start with I'll do I'll do four more images then I'll let you lovely lot get on with your day this is our my really good friend Danny Fagan who's a creative director at Arvin Interactive. This is his young son, Huxley. We made a short film together called Sweet Release, uh, which was all about the end of life of a piñata, and a piñata giving a, a monologue before he smashed a bit, talking about what his life has become. And just before we were rolling, I was shooting some stuff, and this is a behind-the-scenes photo of Huxley getting ready to annihilate this Sweet Release um, piñata. But that was all digital. Yeah, that was Fuji, X, X, Fuji X100S as well. Last two, another portrait. This would have been like a M6 on the left. This was Peggy the dog on the beach um, before she's let loose, just to run around like a lunatic. And then on the right, that's another digital photo from the same shoot of Adam prepping lights for the uh, Fuji X100 um, Fuji for the Fuji uh, shot on the Fuji for the Born a Snake rap music video so it was you know there was always different types of lighting showing up there thank you all so much for staying with me i really appreciate it. as always you lovely lot tuning in for the stream thank you for asking questions thank you for sharing links it's always hugely appreciated thank you for the follow thank you for the subscriptions thank you for the support it honestly means a lot I won't be streaming next week as I'm away, so I'm taking a little little holiday from it. You can catch up with any of these streams from the last 14 days over on the Twitch account, but also I've started uploading any past Twitch streams to YouTube as well. So if you go and follow um, follow me on YouTube, if you search Gavin Strange Jam Factory, you should hopefully be able to find it, but there's also links to it on um, here within the Twitch stream as well. So have a lovely rest of the weekend. Hopefully it's a little bit cooler for everyone. Massive thank you, as always, to everyone. I hope you've enjoyed it, and I will follow up with more links in the Discord as well. If anyone has any questions, then, you know, Discord is the place to ask it. But I will see you lovely lot later. Have a great weekend. Thank you again. Have a good one. Bye-bye. <laughs>